How, how close are the Chinese in quantum compute? Have they pulled level with us? Are they behind? If so, how much? Well, publicly, the Chinese government spends considerably more uh, in dollar terms than the U.S. government or any government does. I mean, they probably spend as much as most of the governments that I can think of combined. Um, and that obviously leads one to, to be preoccupied. Um, we believe that quantum computing and quantum networking are both vital to you know, the national security interests and as well as the economic security interests uh, of, of nations that we're able to sell to, or friendly nations, if you will. Um, and so we're working with uh, the national security infrastructure uh, in all of the friendly nations uh, that the U.S. government has uh, and NATO, of course. We're working to make sure that we have cutting-edge machines locally as well as uh, accessible through the cloud. We're working to secure communications networks, you know, starting with, uh, you know, government labs uh, and utility providers, telcos, financial services providers, et cetera. Um, you know, the Chinese have announced uh, progress in space. And this is one of the reasons why we're, you know, working on things like QKD, quantum key distribution, uh, both in our labs and we've, of course, signed this partnership with Intellion uh, in South Korea. And so, you know, expect more from us as we continue to expand the vision because our, our, our expectation of INQ is that not only can we lead in computing, but that we've expanded into quantum networking, we've made a number of acquisitions as well as grown our business organically. Uh, and our uh, expectation and ambition is to be the 800-pound gorilla of not just quantum computing, but quantum networking. Uh, I want INQ to be the 800-pound gorilla of quantum period <laughs> from okay. a you know, revenue and commercialization perspective on a global basis. So here's the thing. I like that reference, right? 800-pound gorilla. But I mean, the raw material that you're dealing with, not bits, but qubits, right? The, these things are they're, they're tender. They're, t they're, they're, they're fragile. I mean, they need to be treated and worked with with care, right? Which is why I want to ask you about two questions without giving too much away, right? What can you tell us about what you are doing to get over to the biggest challenges to deliver actually useful quantum compute and which one is error correction and the other is scalability. How do you handle both challenges? Well, look, our chip, I was just reaching for it, is really small, right? So our ion trap systems are very space efficient. You can see it behind me as well. And so our 36 qubit system actually just has 36 ions that are effectively hovered on top of this beautiful gilded chip. They're controlled by lasers. And because we have uh, you know, naturally perfect qubits, we have the highest fidelity of anyone who's trying to build a quantum computing pathway. Um, we haven't required error correction actually to get this far, and we won't require it for our AQ64 system um, that we're going to have, uh, you know, successfully demonstrated this year uh, and begin to ship to customers. Um, and so, you know, INQ has been a pioneer in quantum computing for 30 years. We have, you know, raised a billion dollars and had obviously uh, you know, a head start all the way back to 1995 when our founder, Chris Monroe, demonstrated this was possible. You know, we've picked, I believe, the most efficient and wisest path to building a quantum computer. Uh, we don't need dilution refrigerators. We don't need to cool things down. We don't need a football field of space. We don't need a nuclear power plant or billions of dollars of copper wiring, you know, to do things that are useful today and to do things that are hundreds of millions, if not billions of times more powerful in the coming years. Um, and so, you know, I think one of the things exciting about our business is that uh, due to the efficiency, power efficiency, space efficiency, fidelity advantage, and ability to do useful things, uh, you know, we're building the ecosystem that matters today, and we're driving engineering improvements in our systems so quickly that we're really building that long-term customer lock-in. And customer lock-in is, of course, what builds the long-term value uh, in the larger tech companies in the space on a global basis.